This is Michael Sean Wright from Nice Fish Films, and we're on Skype with Chris Carver, who's the COO of InvisibleChildren.com, which I've got to say, the tech behind InvisibleChildren.com, quite amazing, extensive. In, in documentary film, we like to say film without data is silent. A movement without data is silent. So, so Chris, what, what led you guys to dive deep into big data with like the crisis tracker and everything that you do? Sure, sure. Um, well, you know, it really started with our roadie model. Um, you know, we needed a we needed some way to aggregate the data so that we could have, you know, visibility into what's going on because basically we had. You know, at the time, 12. Now we have 16 teams that are throughout the country on a, a daily basis, screening our documentary, taking donations, selling merchandise. So we needed some central, you know, hub to be able to understand what you know what our customers or what our supporters are are telling us and getting feedback in real time. Hi, my name is Katrina Coyne, and I'm one of the full-time volunteers here with Invisible Children. So what are you doing? We are what we call roadies, so I'm leading a team of young people across the Southern California area, and we're going to high schools, colleges, and any place of worship, and sharing the story of our friends who have been directly affected by this conflict, and raising support for our initiatives on the ground in Central Africa. So give me the quick synopsis of Invisible Children for those, for the one or two people who haven't seen it, because millions have already. We are a nonprofit organization based out of San Diego, and we are working to end the longest running conflict in Central Africa. This is a war where the last 25 years, a man by the name of Joseph Kony, who is the leader of the Lord's Resistance Army, has been abducting children and forcing them to fight as child soldiers. He started in Northern Uganda and is now operating the areas of the DR Congo, Southern Sudan, and Central African Republic, where he's still abducting children and attacking families on a daily basis. It's so powerful, so it really started there. And then, you know, obviously, as uh, you, from a media perspective, as you know, uh, being able to, you know, distribute and tell the story of, you know, this, uh, of this, um, of this rebel group and, and the story of invisible children, uh, having technology to be able to do that is is key nowadays. And so, ultimately, you know, having that that structure in place really led us to think about you know, the power of what we could do in the Congo itself. So we've actually used um, Salesforce, the Salesforce platform for a number of things like uh, the engineers putting in data that, to tell us how they're rebuilding schools or rebuilding libraries. So what we thought is, is in the feedback that we got from a number of humanitarian and aid workers up there uh, in the Congo and Central African Republic was there was such a need for uh, communication. So the first step about uh, 12 to 18 months ago was to start to raise funds for an HF radio tower. So really old technology, you know, it's basically military grade walkie talkies. Um, and so we thought that if we could have uh, a number of, yeah, a number of um, radios in the areas most effective and have a central hub where we could collect that data, then we not only thought we could actually help the communities to be able to tell the other local communities that the rebels are in the area or call for help, we could actually then take the technology, implement it into a cloud-based solution and display that in near real time for our supporters here in the States. So the technology really has allowed us to bring, you know, the, the story of the front line home here and it's been amazing. And the the a reaction of our supporters and it, it continues to really bring this this conflict to life and we're going to continue to try to push the envelope until you know this conflict is is, is over <laughs>